In this module, I'm going to guide you through a little bit more of the rigging process. Uh, for this example, I am using this robot that I made. Um, and there's a couple different things that I'm going to be covering with this. To start, I'm actually going to make some changes to the geometry to prove a couple points. First, this is really, really small. Now you want to actually model things at whatever scale they're going to be used for your specific purposes, but because this robot isn't necessarily being used for anything, I just want to show you uh, why I, I can change things if I need to. Uh, one thing I want to show is as I create these joints, you'll notice that they're kind of large in comparison to this robot. So if I had these joints inside of the robot, they would be really hard and difficult to work with. Now I can change these if I select one of the joints and I come down in the attribute editor, so I'm making sure that's up, down under the uh, joint you can change the radius. So I can put like 0.1 and shrink that down. So that could work, but because this is for demonstration purposes and I don't want to be changing every single joint size, I'm just going to increase the size of my robot. So let me take this and I am just going to scale this up by 10 in all three directions. So that's good, that gets me the first one. Now I want to actually move it up. I can model this so that uh, the origin for, or excuse me, the uh, root joint for the rig is lined up at the origin. But for this case, I'm, I can also make the decision to raise this up. So I'm going to hit the D key and holding down the V key for snap to point, I'm going to bring that to the bottom of the feet. Select the D key again holding down the X key for snap to grid. I'll bring that up and into place. Make sure that this is uh, right here at the origin. Now the reason I'm doing this is because potentially in the future if I have this rigged and animated and I want to move it along in space, <clears throat> if I have the root join in a specific spot but I have the, the pivot for the entire object down here, then it can line up exactly flat with the floor. If it's part way through, then I would just have to make modifications within the game engine to, show, to uh, raise up the mesh uh, far enough so that the feet would line up with the floor. But this way I know that they're going to be exactly on the floor as I do the animations. Um, once again, this is mainly just to prove a point. Right now, as I've made these changes, I've added history to this object. Um, not necessarily history, but I, I've changed the transform attributes. If I were to actually come in and cut stuff, which we will during this rigging process, that would add history. Um, and those things need to be removed uh, so that you don't have problems with it down the road. So just as a good cleanup practice, before you start the rigging process, make sure that your mesh is clean and ready to go. So I can go edit, delete all by type history, Modify, freeze transforms, and you see everything was zeroed out and the scale became one across the board. And basically just saying this is its natural state now. We want it to be this. Um, you go, you check the outliner, make sure everything's ready, and you do the other basic cleanups. And then I will file save scene now that I've got it prepared for what I want to do with it. So now I can jump straight into the rigging process. I'm going to select this right here, which is creating joints. You can also, if you go to the uh, rigging file menu, skeleton, create joints. So however you want to do it. Now as I click and start trying to create joints, you can see that I can create these anywhere and all over the place. They're lining up flat on the grid right now, but if I want to actually do something with it where I've got the joints going up, there's a few different ways I can do this. Um, the best way is actually just to use the different cameras that you have at your disposal. So if you hit the spacebar key, and by the way, if it's not, if it's just showing the perspective and won't shift, down here you see that there's that four view mode. And so I can look at this either from the front, the side, the top, or from any other angle I need to to be able to get this to work correctly. But I'm going to hit the spacebar again while highlighting over this panel to make it large. But I want to point out, this was modeled to be a robot, not a person. Now, robots can be directly up and down on top of themselves. So as you can see, everything in this robot uh, along its central core is lined up with the center of the grid. And this is for ease of use and also to demonstrate some of these basic rigging techniques. But a real person 
would actually be offset a little bit. The head would come up here, the joint chain would need to, instead of going straight up and down on a person, would need to come down through the neck into the top of the spine, which would then curve through here, then into the pelvis, and then from there you have everything else. But there's a lot of curving and back and forth in the human figure. So you would need to take that into account. However, because this is a robot, I can just do things directly up and down. So in order to do this and make sure it's lined up right here at the center where I want it, I have the create joint turned on. So once again, you can grab it from here or skeleton create joints. And then I am going to hold down the X key for snap to grid. And I'm going to build this out. I want to put my uh, core joint or the root joint right here in the center of the torso. So this is where uh, in a human the pelvis would be. This is where I want all my motion to come from. The reason I want to do this is because if I put it somewhere else, all motion is going to be a little bit weird. For example, if I put the root joint over here in the finger, all motion would come from the finger and we don't move that way. If I move a leg, it, or excuse me, if I, I move my core body, everything else should be influenced. It shouldn't be if I wiggle my finger, the whole body flaps up and down. So I want to make sure that the, the root joint or the, the parent, you know, of the entire uh, skeletal chain is right down here in the pelvis area. So holding down the X key, I'll click there. I'm going to create another joint about right here. And that's what the arms are going to attach into. I'm going to create another joint right about here. Uh, that's going to be for the base of the neck. Another joint right here. That's going to be for the base of the head and another joint around up here at the top of the head. Now once again, I need to work from parent to child as I'm doing this stuff. And so what I need to do is I'll start with the parent and move it into position. So holding down the X key, or excuse me, holding down the V key, so I've got snap to point turned on, I just want to line it up right here uh, along that, that base part of the torso. I could also raise it up or lower it down depending on how I want the movement, but because most of the movement is going to be coming from around this area on this, I'll stick it there. This one, uh, just for ease of use, I'm going to snap this to this ball joint end so that it lines up directly across with the shoulders. Now this one's position doesn't matter as much because this whole chest piece is going to be solid. It's a solid piece of metal. Um, so it doesn't really matter where it is. And technically, I could also uh, attach the shoulders straight into the torso piece simply because nothing else moves. But just for the sake of doing it, I put it right here. Grabbing this next joint and snapping here. Not necessarily the bottom of the neck right here, but right here to the top of the shoulders. Grab the next joint. Holding down the V key, snap here to the bottom of the head. And this top piece, holding down the V key, I'll snap to the top of the head. So if I look at this inside view, um, everything lined up exactly on the grid. And so for this robot, that works out great. Once again, if you're doing something that is more human uh, or organic, you won't be able to do this. If you do this with a regular model, uh, it's going to have issues. Once again, at that point, you would want to start actually having some uh, adjustment with placement so uh, and also working from the bottom so maybe the spines coming back here you'd have more chains to help create that transition in the spine for bends and something like that to create the joint chain but I'm gonna step back for now because it is a robot and I can line things up right where I need them to alright so with that joint chain in place I can then work on the next one so I'll do the arms next. For the arms, I am going to do the same thing. I can choose to do it either from the front, uh, the side. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose the top down view. Once again, I hit the space bar and then highlight and space bar to go in and out of the panels. But I'm going to do the top view because I know I also need to work on the fingers. So once again, select create joints. And holding down the X key, I'm going to get it kind of in place. So around there, around there, around there for the wrist. 
Now, once more, working from the parent to the child, I know it's lined up right in the middle based on the construction, but once more, if you're creating something that's more organic, you won't be able to do that. You'll have to make some adjustments. But what it's doing is it's creating it right along the bottom grid, and I'm not worried about that yet. I can bring that up into place as needed. But from top down, I know it's lined up right in the center. And I'm going to actually now, holding down the V key, snap this to the center, because this is going to act as a ball joint. The way this robot works is that these arm pieces and the fingers and the legs and everywhere else move through rotation of this ball joint. And so I'm lining it up right there in the center of it, because that's where I want that rotation to come from. Holding down the V key, move the next one into place. Once again, using snap to point, and that is a guide to get that into position. And the final one, snapping that into position. Okay, so I've got those pieces created. Now I'm gonna start by working on the fingers. So once more, holding down the X key, I'll create three more joints. And so this first one, I will snap to point and make sure it snaps right to the middle of it. Grab the next one, snap right to the middle. And this one will be right here at the end. And once that's created, I can hold down the V key and snap to the center right there. And I will hit Control D. And then I can move this new one into place. So the Control D was to duplicate. So I've just created the two finger sets. For the thumb, I will do something similar. But this one isn't exactly lined up the way everything else has been. So I do need to make some modifications. So I'll get it close. Um, in this case, I won't use snap to grid, but I will put it about right here. And the second one about right here at the end of the finger. And so you notice when I put that second one down, the first one rotated to be lined up to go down that chain. To make sure that it's exactly lined up, I will hold down the V key and I can snap to this point that is right in the center of the ball joint there and holding down the V key, snap right there to the end of the finger. So if I switch out and come to perspective mode again, now you can see that things are lined up for the most part. And this is where I need to start making uh, the child-parent connections. So I select the child, shift select the parent, and hit P. I can select the child, shift select the parent, P. Child, shift select, P. And that can also be done by going edit parent, but once again, there's the hotkey. Um, oh, yeah. Um, and it's something that makes life easier if you can learn the hotkeys. So now I'll grab the parent of this entire chain for the arm, and I'll come to the front view, and I can hold down the V key and snap this up into position by highlighting over while I'm holding down the left mouse key uh, over this vertice that's at the end of that ball joint. So I can focus in, and you see that that's now lined up exactly down the arm and through the fingers and everything else. Yet again, based on construction. Uh, if you do need to modify it for something, once again, that's organic, then do it. Just move it into position. And in some cases, things don't have to be exact. There is some give and take and a little bit of leeway uh, with some of the placement for things that are organic. But you want to get it in roughly the same position as you would have the regular uh, skeletal movement and rotation coming from. All right, so with this in place, I want to work on the leg. Now these legs are going to be a little bit different from human legs, but honestly not that much. Um, the way our, uh, our bones work is actually very similar to what the way this is lined up. Um, for example, our femur, which is the upper leg bone, does have this head that comes off to the side and offsets and sits into your hip. Um, but there are a couple things that will change a little bit with the way this is rigged versus uh, the way you would do a bipedal character. And so I'll point those out as we go. Now the first thing I'm going to do is before I start creating the joints and getting those into place, I'm going to cut into the geometry as I said I would earlier. So I'm going to, uh, wrong thing, I'm going to come back to the poly modeling tools and grab the multi-cut tool. And 
with the multi-cut tool selected. I'm going to hold down shift for snap to point. Oop. Control Z because I'm selecting the wrong spot. But I can shift to make sure that's lined up in the center. Shift select again just so it's easier for me to see and to remind me that I need to remove that in a little bit. And that created a vertice there right in the center of this ball joint. Now the reason I need that is because currently there's nothing to help me snap that joint right into position so that it lines up. The other ones, uh, I can actually use this ball joint end to help line it up on the knee and the ankle. And so with that, I'm going to come back here to rigging, select the create joint tool. And let me get down here. For this first one, I'm going to line it up roughly where it needs to be. For the second one, I'm going to use snap to grid. So I'll hold down the X key and I will snap to the grid here and going directly below it to roughly the right area, snap to grid. Now the reason I'm doing the snap to grid is to make sure that these are directly above and below each other because that's the way they are set up. And so once more, I'll come select parent. Oh, unless I make that mistake and have something different. So I'll hit delete to undo that chain. Okay, I needed to switch out and get back to the selection mode so I can get things to work out. All right, so I'm going to select this first joint, go back to object mode, select the joint right there. Holding down the V key, I can now snap to get this right on top of that vertice. Now you don't want to grab the center and do that because, well, I'll just show you. If I hold V and snap, and look at it from the side, it is now also snapped forward so that it's exactly on the center. I only want to move in two axes. So if I control Z to step back, if I move in two axes rather than all three, oh, let me step back. Um, let me grab right here from the side and then from the other one, so one axis at a time, then it stays in position rather than snapping forward. So with that lined up, I can come down here and using snap or hold uh, holding down V for snap to point I can snap this to the top of that joint I also want to snap this down so that it lines up in the center of that ball joint and the next one because I already know it's lined up side to side what I do need to do though is snap that down to right here Okay, so with that in place, I'm going to add one more joint here to the end of the foot. I can just make that a, a joint anywhere in space. But what I do need to do is make sure that that's lined up. So I will hold down the V key to snap to the center of that ball joint so it's lined up with the other. And the V key to snap to the front of the foot. And so what this is going to allow me to do is have a, a second or a, a section here that allows me to move the foot up and down. I will then shift select from the child to the parent and hit P so that that's connected in. So now I've got the ball joints for the, or the ball joints. I now have the joints for the skeletal chain down the arms and the legs. The final thing I need to do is to connect these in. So I'll check, select the child first, then the parent and hit P. And I want to show you what happens when I do it in the wrong order. So for example, if I grab that chest piece first, then shift select that for the shoulder and hit P, you notice it comes undone because now these are two chains. It can't be a child of two parents at the same time. So to fix that, I go, oh, okay, I need to select this as a child, select this as the parent and hit P. And that removes that connection. So to get it right, once again, select the child first, shift select the parent hit P. And so when I select that root joint, everything else should be selected down the chains. And so with this, I now have uh, half of this uh, rig completed. So I'll end this video here and in the next one we'll come back and continue working on things.